Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Hao Miao. How are you all doing? Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about less maybe technology and more about how we kind of think about product and product design. And so this topic of really how to create useful products out of the connected devices that we're building is a very deep and subtle one worthy of a lot of thought and a lot of um, attention. Um, so I'm going to try to compress it into a few talking points and go over it in 15 minutes. I uh, figure if it works for presidential candidates, it's going to work for me, right? So my background, uh, as Florian mentioned, um, mostly in robotics, actually. I worked on self-driving cars at Caltech, and I worked on some of the first quad-rotor drones at Stanford. While I was at Stanford, because it's Stanford, um, I tried to start a couple of companies, one around 3D body scanning and another around drones, took one of them through YC, and they were both abject failures. So I know a little bit about creating products that are not useful and that are not successful. So going through this process, coming around to a new startup, I started thinking, OK, you know, how do we distinguish between really useful, creative, valuable products that will become part of customers' everyday lives from things that are just adding technology for the sake of technology? Just connecting something to the internet does not necessarily make it useful. Right? And so if we look at different products. There are things that get announced that sometimes it seems obvious, man, like, who authorized this, right? Who thought that adding Twitter and apps to a refrigerator was a good idea? And in retrospect, maybe it, it looks like, oh, you know, obviously that wasn't going to do so well. But there are some other products that you look at when they are first announced that also are not as obviously going to be successful, right? Adding internet to a thermostat way back in the day may have seemed just as ridiculous to some people as adding internet to a refrigerator. So why did one of these take off and one of these not? You know, looking at kind of some examples from my personal life, um, products that I personally have used and not used, um, one of these on the left here, I'm told that there is a laser pointer, which I don't know how to activate, so I'm not going to blind anybody. But um, oh, ta-da. This, uh, this is a sleep tracker. It's a sleep sensor. It's a wonderfully dev designed device. It works great, and it keeps track of your sleeping habits. Um, it's beautiful. It's really cool, and I used it for about two weeks, and I stopped using it. You know, this, everybody knows, Fitbit, and that's a Wi-Fi connected scale, and those are part of my everyday kind of habits and everyday use. And so I was asking myself, what's the difference? How can we kind of, in a um, clear way, articulate, maybe think about you know, what makes one of these products useful and part of our everyday life? And so I came up with an answer to it. Um, it may not be your answer, but I would definitely appreciate your feedback. And that is that when we think about smart things, when we think about these internet-connected devices, right, they fall into basically two types, sensors and actuators, things that collect information and things that do something, right? Something automated that lets you perform a task that you otherwise wouldn't. And so in order for these tools to be useful, they got to be one of these kind of two things, right? You have to tell me something that I don't know. Provide me with new and valuable information. And or help me, something, help me do something that I can't do already, right? And the crux of this is that really, if you think about it, information needs to be actionable in order to be meaningful. Right? Simply logging something or collecting something from sensors is, is nice, but if you're not able to do something with it, then that information falls by the wayside. The user is not going to keep collecting, keep looking at that information, because it's no longer valuable to them. So let me return to the products that you know, I've been using or not using. Right? If we look at the Fitbit, we look at the tracking, right? let me ask a question. Without looking at your Fitbit or your smartphone or your Apple Watch, how many of you in this room know how many steps you've taken today? Show of hands. Really, you know exactly how many steps you took without looking at a system. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? That is non-obvious information, right? How many steps you took is not something that you're going to consciously track and consciously um, be aware of. And so that provides you with something new that you didn't already have. And the value of that information is that you can immediately do something about it, right? I know, for example, that I want to be moving more. I want to be exercising more. And you know, doctors are always saying, like, you should walk so many steps. If I know that I took 4,000 steps today, 
and I know that I have a goal of getting to, say, 10,000 steps, I know exactly what I need to do to hit my goal. I need know exactly the action that I need to take as a result of the information that I just received. And so that becomes kind of part of your everyday life. You're checking this information. You're like, oh, I have this information. I can do something about it. Contrast that with the really cool sleep sensor. I was in love with this thing for a little bit. Um, and then I realized that the key piece of information that it provided, how well did I sleep, was something that was immediately apparent to me when I woke up. I didn't really need a sensor to tell me, did I sleep last night or was I awake at 3 a.m. last night? I, I know that I was awake at 3 a.m. last night. I know because I got up and I looked at the clock and I was like, damn, I'm awake, right? And so that piece of information is not new. Fine, that's okay. There's other value to you know, keeping track of this information, right? Which is to basically allow me to log it over time, right? Unless I keep a journal or diary of my sleeping patterns, I'm not gonna know how well I slept. So that helps. But the problem is that information is not, at least for myself, easily actionable. There are so many different variables that come into the quality of my sleep, right? Did I eat too many burritos last night? Did I drink? Was I too stressed out because I had to give a talk and I wasn't really practiced for it, right? Did my wife sleep well? Was she kicking me? I mean, all those pieces of information go into how well I slept. And so if I know, for example, I look at back and I say, hey, I was sleeping well here, I wasn't sleeping well there, there's not much right now that I can do to say, these are the things I'm gonna do immediately to sleep better, because so many of those things are outside of my control. And that's ultimately why I stopped using the device. The information it gave me wasn't actionable. And if you jump back to kind of the scale, right, it's, it's very similar to the sleep tracker, except for the fact that A, your weight is non-obvious, and B, the thing is that, you know, in terms of the inputs to your weight, they're actually quite simple. For the most part, it's what did I eat and how much did I exercise? And so if I see my weight going up, I can either increase my exercise or decrease the food that I eat. Immediately actionable. And so if you look at kind of the history of smart products, right, if you look at the internet things before it was cool, there's two products that have been consistently successful that have been really the only real home automation products for the past 30 years or so that have been in everyone's homes. And that is home security systems and thermostats, right? And so if we think about a thermostat in this context, right, the information that it provides you is, you know, kind of decently useful. Um, the exact temperature is maybe not super valuable, but the thing that it allows you to do, the action that it allows you to take on your behalf is, right, it lets you control the temperature, set the temperature so that it's always comfortable. That is something meaningful. That is information that it collects and then it takes action on your part. And if you think about what Nest does with that, right, is that it expands it so that you can see it and you can control it from anywhere. Um, one of the things that's been most valuable to us as we, as we use kind of our Nest at the office is being able to basically set the thing from far away. Oh, we're coming in now, we can set the temperature so that it's comfortable by the time we get there. And it seems like such a small thing, right? But that, that actuation, that ability to do something that we weren't able to do before and have it impact our lives on an everyday basis made it actually part of kind of our everyday use. And if you think about home security systems, right? Knowing if somebody broke into your house is valuable. Is there a burglar in my house is information that you would like to know, for example, if you're on vacation or sitting here in the audience. You know, somebody, did somebody break into your house? Are they stealing your stuff? And the thing that, enables it, that it enables you to do, the action that that information enables, calling the police, also immediately useful, right? Somebody broke in, call the cops, they're gonna go there, hopefully, and get rid of the burglar. The information action loop is closed, right? And so that's kind of the premise that we started from with our product. We looked at this and we thought, okay, there's something a little bit incomplete about that picture of did somebody break in and then if so, call the police afterward. What I would really like is, is somebody about to break in so that I can stop them from breaking in in the first place? So I can keep them from doing that and so that I don't have to deal with you know, broken window, missing stuff afterward. So we created Kuna. It's a smart camera with an intercom built into an outdoor light fixture. And you might be wondering, okay, why do we put it outdoors and why do we build it into a light? The nice thing about building it into a light is that if you think about your houses, pretty much every one of your houses has a light fixture at every door, which means there's already mounting hardware and power taken to that location. So if you just swap out your light, you can easily install a smart camera without having to run wires, without having to drill holes in the walls, which is one of the big problems that people usually face. And so with Kuna, what it does is that anytime someone comes to your front door, it'll send you an alert 
And you can see them, and you can talk to them on your phone from anywhere. Um, just now, for example, I was, I was able to see somebody coming to my co-founder's house. Um, and so what that enables you to do, why does that enable you to prevent a break-in? Because for the most part, burglars are not sophisticated criminals. What they want to do is hit easy targets. Easy targets means no one's home, right? And so the diabolically clever way that they find empty houses is they go up to your front door and they knock. And if there's no answer, that's how they know that the home is empty. That's when they decide, okay, I'm gonna smash and grab and break in. So you can see them, you can talk to them, they'll move on to the next house. And the other cool thing about having something like this is that once you do you know, provide this useful information, once you are um, doing something useful for your, for your customers, they will expand on it to use it in other ways that you never kind of thought of, right? And so this is one of my, one of my favorite things is that these are some screenshots from a video that one of our users created and sent to us of the different ways that he uses his Kuna. He bought it for security. Now he uses it, for example, when the gas meter reader came by and he wasn't home. And he was able to talk to the gas meter guy and let him know, oh, I'm not home, and they were able to set up a time for him to come by later and, and connect. He's able to kind of see when his mom came by, when his other family members are by. He's able to kind of keep track of, for example, the kids, the wife. And most ironically, his non-Kuna home security system gave a false alarm, as they are want to do. Um, in fact, 98% of alarm calls from traditional security systems are false alarms. And when the cops came out to his house, pulled up his Kuna, got the alert, talked to the cop, and was like, hey, sorry, dude, it's a false alarm, no problem. Right? And so we started out trying to let people know about is somebody about to break into their home to allow them to stop a break in before it happens. And then we found all these additional use cases that they were able to kind of um, take advantage of. Right? That it starts out with security and expands into convenience. And so we're able to allow them to know these things. Did my mom come by? Right? When did my kid come home? All this useful information that they wouldn't have had otherwise, and then also act upon it. Right? Knowing the meter guy came by is nice. Being able to talk to the meter guy and reschedule with them was huge. Like it, got, it got this user so excited that he made this video and, and sent it to us. So that kind of wraps my presentation a um, minute or two early. But um, you know, that's pretty much how we think about how to make the product useful. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.